Here with head coach Mike McConthy, the Demons coming off a 73-68 win at Southeastern. Coach, uh, back at home Wednesday night, we're back on the home away, home away, home away shuttle bus uh, to face New Orleans. But going back to the weekend, very good win. You mentioned it. Great to teach off a win, especially a win where you're challenged and maybe two weeks ago you don't know how to respond. Well, and the thing about it is, if you go back to challenge, we're up 21 in the first half. They cut it to 10 at half, come back out, make a storm. We push back out ahead, and then they made another push to come, go ahead with you know, around four-minute mark, and then we're able to go on a 9-2 run the last two or three minutes, two and a half minutes, I guess, of the game to be able to win the ball game, and that was important. If you go back and if you could have put that together against other teams, you might not be sitting at two and four. You could be, but if what – should have been, didn't happen, whatever. That's just kind of the way life is in general. And I mean, you have to take care of the opportunities you have, and we did the other night. Um, and C Southeastern did a great job. I mean, they were 17 for 18, I think, from the free throw line. Um, we were really good from the field at 56% from the field and 35.7 from a three-point line. But one of the most interesting stats in our two wins versus um, McNeese and Southeastern this year is the number of threes, the 14 and 15, I believe, in those two games, respectively. And it results in a win. So what that's telling me is less is better. Now, of course, if you're making every one you throw up there, it's a little bit different story. But that's not been the case for us shooting a, a dismal percent um, from the three-point line, something that we really felt like coming in the season would be one of our strong points. And I still think it is a strong point. We just got to get confidence and start making shots. Well, one guy who did that, and it kind of falls in the next man up category, is LaTerrence Reed. Starts for the first time since December. Uh, he hits three big threes in the second half. So he's a guy that has shown. I mean, he's he's hit seven in a game before since he's been here. Kind of rounding maybe a little bit into form. Anytime you have a, an injury you're coming back from, it takes a while to get physical confidence back as well as mental confidence. Well, I think the biggest thing for him is I think he's had confidence, but one is him being in the right place at the right time to get the shots. The one thing that was different, that's been different in, the, in these games here recently, is that he's just catching and shooting the ball. And if he does that, he's really, really effective. And he's got to have every, all the moving parts going in the same direction. That's the same way for any, anybody. And, you know, I mean, catch it with two hands, be squared up, shoulder square, shoot the ball. And he's done a lot better job with that. And I will say that he's, he's tried to be a little bit more vocal, and that's one of the biggest struggles that this team has. Uh, Larry Owens said something on the bench the other night. And, by the way, I thought his last three or four minutes of that game that he went back in the game were some of his best minutes all year. And he's had some pretty good minutes because he got a big rebound. He scored two buckets in the last 207. He did some really good things. But when everything was starting to, to unwind or unravel, he said, guys, we are good. Now, that's an indication of a team that does not have confidence. But for them, to, for Larry to say that versus me say that is enormous because peer pressure or peer support, you know, we'll use it peer support because I wouldn't think that's pressure. Peer support is so much more important than me telling them how good they can be or whatever because that's one of them. That's one of the team members, one of the brothers that's on the team. And I just thought that, would, that was a really good point. Uh, that he made. I guess now the next step for Larry, and he's been really good at times, especially in conference play. Uh, he's had three double-figure scoring outings, and I know we talk about points a lot, but he's been good on the boards against Nichols. He had a really good defensive play late in that game against Southeastern where he just stood there, and when you're yeah. six, seven, 300, sometimes that's all you got to do. But now is the challenge for him to put that together game after game after game. Well, it is, but you know, I mean, that's a challenge for everybody. I mean, whether it's coaches or players or whatever, every game, every day we come, we got to put more together and be there. And, you know, in coaching, you, you're coaching in different modes because you're trying to keep your guys going through the difficult parts of the schedule to overcome that difficult portion of the schedule. Now you get to where you get a win. You got two wins. You got a big, big week for basketball. You got to take care of your business, put yourself in the best position you can moving forward to get in the Southland Conference Tournament. You'll be at home against New Orleans on Wednesday night. That's one of those big games if you can take that step and build a, a second straight win. What do you see from the privateers? Obviously a very familiar face on the sideline and Mark Schlesinger, but 
a uh, team that's they're starting to do what you just mentioned they're starting to put some wins together well they're they're just really really hard nosed they're really going to compete you they're going to knock you in the mouth i don't mean figuratively but they're going to knock you in the mouth and you know um they're they're just going to come compete and the key to us what will, will will we know what our strengths are and will we execute the game plan and who's going to be tougher you know i mean and at the second half of the stephen half game last week i said you got to be tougher than those guys and you know, so every game you go out, you got to be tougher and you got to want it more than the other team. And there were some things that happened in the southeastern game that I saw that we wanted it more, and we got to build on those. So we got to build on that against UNO and Coach Schlesinger's team. You turn around, and you look toward the weekend, you go to Central Arkansas, and I guess maybe this year it's a little different. Uh, it always seems to be a track meet when you play those guys, and uh, your, your two wins you've gotten haven't been your most breakneck pace they've been a solid pace but it's one that's always a fun matchup for the fans because there does seem to be a lot of points between you two well one of the things that's really interesting we've been really we've still been a track meet in the first half most of the time but we've not been a track meet in the second half so that's something that we've got to work on because we're not telling our guys not to run but we've got to realize that we've got to run we've got to get out we got to keep the pressure on. Doesn't mean that we got to take a quick early three. It means that we need to get up and down the floor. And uh, so that's something we've really got to work on, extending it for 40 minutes versus just 20 minutes. You've talked about looking to find that guy. And Patrick Netherton and you discussed this a little bit after Saturday's game. But Trenton Massner does so many things for this team, so many things well. He looked like he maybe took that step toward being, you don't want to necessarily have the guy but he took a step toward maybe being a little bit of more of an alpha out there toward the end of that game. Yeah, and I mean, you know, it was it was an interesting matchup too at the end of the game because he was playing against a much more physical guy, but yet he was still able to make some things happen. Did some great things in the second half. He had a huge black block. And and this I want to get I'm talking about not coach black, but block, but we were in black our black defense and Trenton gets a a, a block. And the interesting part about it is you tell guys all the time, whatever play you go in the game, if you've only got one play, you want to do the best you can. And we put Robert Ugas in because he's six foot eight, unbelievably long. And he's we go to a black defense, which is a one three one. The ball, he has to throw the guy has to throw the ball way high to get over to their shooter in the corner and Trenton it gives Trenton enough time to cover out and tip the ball at the at the buzzer why is that important if they make that shot at the buzzer then it's a much tighter game down the stretch so you know it's just one of those things so Robert I was really proud of him because he did the thing he needed to do and then I thought Jovan Zalanbaba came in in the last two minutes defensively and did some good things for us kind of Having, having an off night offensively, but was able to come in, responded well, even though everything hadn't gone just like he wanted, but I thought he did a really good job and responded well. Neat story about Andre, his father, and him, and your ties on the Southland website. We'll give that a plug. But before we get out of here, I think we'd be remiss not to mention the two freshmen, Carvel Tset and Kendall Coleman, what they meant. Uh, you know, I thought Kendall had a very interesting answer to what I asked him after the game. I said, you know, where were you mentally? Do you think you would have been there maybe a couple of weeks ago to be able to step up and hit those two free throws? He goes, well, I don't know, but I feel like I'm a lot better than I was on November 25th. Hey, there's no doubt about it, but he's had some pretty good games in November and early December. And I think what happened to him is I think that he, he, he wants to do good. I think that early on we didn't have a lot of stuff in, so he's having to adjust to every game as a different game plan. Whereas in high school, you're the biggest guy out there and they got to worry about you. Well, at this level, we got to worry about them too. Now, granted, I'm a firm believer in do what you do and do it the best you possibly can, but you still have to know what the other team is doing. I think Carvel and I think Kendall have really stepped up. I think that they've got the respect of their teammates. I've seen Jamari Gregg and Larry Owens really, and Dalen Williams really encourage Kendall. And those are guys that Kendall's taking minutes from them. And that is a great quality and a teammate for that. So my hat's off to them, but Kendall's doing well. And I'd have to say the same thing with Carvel because, you know, we moved him to the point, so it's kind of spread some minutes out for C.J. Jones, who's starting, and Brian White, who got to come back and play. We're glad to get him back. And, and he, he's done some good things. But, um, you know, just really two talented freshmen that had to grow up in a hurry. All right.
right, Coach. Thank you so much. Good luck this week.